Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes just for people to jump on and Facebook to notify everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to give it a couple more moments. I've got some exciting things planned for you this evening. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Hi, Andrea. I'm going to get started shortly. Okay, so this evening, obviously you've all seen the um, Sweet Squared information that we're going to be doing enhancements with Plexi Gel today. But what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. So the team asked me if we could do a transformation from a short nail to a long nail. But I didn't really just want to do that. Um, I feel for you guys, you've obviously already seen me, me live twice now. We've done plexi gel from scratch and you've seen me do plexi gel removal so for those of you that missed it they are saved in the video section on the sweet squared page so definitely revisit that but tonight i wanted to do something a little bit more creative a little bit more interesting for you so we are going to do a little bit of nail art with plexi gel and by that i mean encapsulation okay so for those of you that are completely new to enhancements you can still do this okay i've tried to keep it fairly simple so that those of you that are new to enhancements can have a little play around as well. But maybe those of you that are a little bit more experienced will be able to make this your own and try something different as well. So I found out some really interesting information the other day. So I think for me, it gives me that creative tool that I can really share with you guys. Um, and I think for when you go back to the salon, it's going to be something new to add to your menu as well. So I'm hoping to give you some great little tips, great little tricks to help you with this. But what I want to do today is also hand it over to you guys. So I've created three different looks and I want you to decide which one we work on today. So it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit more interactive. And along the way, we might make some changes to the design. And the thing is, I'm going to tell you what colours I've used. But you can make this whatever you want it to be. OK, so if I use blue, you can use pink. You know, it's not a set rule. It's going to give you the technique to go away and have a play around yourself. OK. How does that sound, everyone? Does that sound okay? Are we excited for this? Something a little bit different. Oh, we've got someone joining from Louisiana. Amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to spin you around. I'm going to spin you around to my demo station, and I'm just going to join on my iPad as well, just so that I can try and keep track of your comments tonight. I really struggled last week. I had my head in a light box. I just want to make sure that I can see what's going on. But we've also got um, my lovely colleague, Angie. She's in the chat as well. So she's going to be helping me out a little bit this evening. Um, and obviously, if there's anything that's based around my design, then I'm going to come back to it at the end. So I'll be here to help you. Um, but let me just get you all set up. So we're on. Bear with me a moment. And I'm just going to spin you guys around. I'm just going to pop you out for a second. And I'm just going to drop my stand down. And we're going to get you set up in there so you can see what is going on so bear with me okay all right so bear with me a moment okay guys so i'm going to apologize in advance for my nails like i said to you last week i am my own worst client um so my my non-dominant hand well my dominant hand should i say is in horrendous condition i might put some gloves on so today what we're going to take a look at are these so this is all created with plexi gel okay this is look number one so it's a little bit different we've got almost like a glitter design with a little bit of marbling but actually this is quite an easy design I think you'll be quite surprised. So I've, I've tried to make it suitable for everybody of every capability so we can really have a little play around and try something different. So that's look number one, okay? For that look, we've got a list of products and again, we'll do it for the next one. So we'll come back to it. So then we've got this little opal number in the middle. So this has got a matte finish, but I must admit, I've just popped a little bit of moisturizer on. So I'm just going to give that little bit of a wipe, guys, so you can see the true matte effect come through so this is look number two and again this is encapsulated all enhancement with plexi but something a little bit different but it's fairly easy i'll be honest with you you know none of these techniques are hard but we're going to do it from start to finish the next one is a little short number now this one obviously we're doing an extreme enhancement tonight nothing too long because with 
plexi gel. With Builder, we really don't want to be extending any more than 12 millimeters. If we want to go more than 12 millimeters, we're going to move over to another system such as liquid and powder or breezy gel. Okay, so we can do this a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll come back to all of them again, and I want you guys to comment in the chat one, two, or three. Okay, I might need your help help with this, Ange, just to see what everybody thinks. So we've got number one. Looks gorgeous from behind as well. We've got number two. Again, a little bit more exciting from behind. And then we've got number three. But we'll make a longer version of this, I think. Let's go for something slightly longer. And that's number three. So what do you guys think? So bear with me. Let's have a little look at the chat. So we've got one, two, or three. Now remember, guys, we're thinking about the technique rather than the colour. I know they're not to everybody's taste, but what I'm thinking about here is technique and how we'd create that with a different colour as well. So let's have a little look in the chat, guys. So we've got, bear with me, two number twos, number one, another two, a couple of threes. Oh, this is going to be hard, guys. For anybody that hasn't commented, can you comment for me? Just because we're, uh, we're undecided here. So we've got number one. Number two. Or number three. And how much time we have is going to depend on what we're going to do as well. If I do have time, we might get a chance to do two, but let's see. So let's go back to the chat. So any of the team from S2, what are we thinking? Are we thinking, which is the winner? So we've got a couple of ones. I can see Kim's watching. Kim and Ange, help me out. What are we going for? One, two, or three? I feel like I should have done a, a poll for this. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going quickly through. I think number one might be the winner here, guys. It's we're all quite undecided. One, two, three, four. Right, and you said one's most popular. Okay, perfect. So let's get started. Now, guys, I've got another question for you. You're gonna hate me after this. I just want a little bit of input from you tonight. It's it's quite exciting. It gives us something different. Do we want to go for the same shape, so almost like a tapered edge, or do we want to go for more of an almond style? You tell me, tapered or almond? Okay, let me know in the chat, guys, what we want to go for. So we're going with this one, which is number one, or tapered or almond? I can see Rachel in the chat there. Hi, Rach. So we're just going to decide on what shape. If nobody comments, I'll stick with the shape that we've got. I don't know if my chat on here is a little bit behind. Okay, so what I'm going to do while we're deciding is I am going to start to prep. Now, those of you that watched last week will know that I was here last week. So these nails have only been prepped uh, a week ago. To be honest, there's going to be very little to no cuticle on this nail. I'll be honest, honest with you, very, very, very little. So we're just going to do a quick tidy up. And I think we're going to work on this one. Okay. So you can see here we've had a little break in the corner. Okay. And we're going to do this from start to finish, guys. Okay. So the first thing, obviously, we'd do if we had a client in front of us is we would call blue. We'd have already washed the hands. We've got full PPE on. Obviously, things are different now. Our next thing that we're going to do is our prep, okay? This is the absolute foundation because it doesn't matter what we do in terms of aesthetics or how that enhancement looks, but if it doesn't last, what's the point, okay? So let's give this a little bit of a tidy up. So we're doing a dry prep with Plexi, okay? Dry prep, we're working our way around. And Ange, I might need your, uh, your help in the chat again just to let me know whether we're going almond or whether or not we're going tapered. I'm just gonna work my way around. Oh, there is a little bit, a little bit hiding in the sidewalls. I didn't think there'd be much. So we're just gonna work our way around just as we usually would, but remember with Plexi Gel, it's got to be a dry prep for adhesion. Okay, 
bit of stuff in that. So most we're going to get off with our pushy. I'm just going to go around with my curette. These are such a handy little tool for anything that's hiding right down into those side walls. You've got to really change your angle when you're working with this, I'll be honest. It's not the most comfortable tool to use, but it's really effective. Obviously, if I was working on a client, I'll be, I'll be working a bit faster than this, guys. Okay, so my next step, and it's up to you if you want to file first or file after your cuticle work, but I'm just going to shape and refine that extension edge. I'm not taking much off of here because we need something to anchor that, anchor that form under. And then we're going to really gently remove surface shine. Okay? So I'm going to use a koala buffer for this. And when I say gently, we're just going to go around in a little cuticle seal. And we're going to come down really, really gently. This should not be you flying over the client's nails with a buffer. Okay? Gone are those days. We need to make sure that we're looking after the integrity of that natural nail. So really gentle, 240 grit. Removing shine in the direction of nail growth. Next step, we're going to move on to our scrub fresh. Okay, so this should be used with every single CD service. Okay, every single service. This is going to make sure that we completely remove any pathogens from the nail. We're going to completely dehydrate, and it gives us that prime foundation to place our enhancement onto. So we're going to take our scrub fresh and we are going to scrub the nail we're not tickling it we are scrubbing okay so we're going to scrub over that surface i like to think around about five seconds i'm getting right into the lateral folds and i'm going to get right under that extension edge okay so that's completely clean now so i'm just going to jump back to the chat Ange or kim did we figure out if we were going to go for an almond or a tapered nail? Or oh, was it almond? I think it was almond, was it almond? I'll wait for one of the, the girls to comment on that. So while I'm waiting, let's move on to our next step. So the first thing we're gonna do now when it actually comes to application is we're gonna move on to our bonder, okay? So this is a thin layer over the natural nail and this is our adhesion product. So this is gonna really grip on to that natural nail, okay? So we're going to start off in the middle, we're going to push up and we're going to come down. I've got a little bit too much product so I'm just going to drain my brush off. It looks like almond one guys, so we're going to go for an almond. And I'm just going to literally pop my finger underneath here and I'm just going to really put a little bit of pressure on just so that I can seal that free edge because this is really important guys this is what's going to give us that adhesion and make sure that we don't have any lifting okay uh, and you said almond wins but only just so we're going to pop that into the lamp on button number one for 10 seconds so we're going to sculpt out this enhancement we've got enough uh, length on the natural nail to be able to sculpt out this enhancement so i think let's go for sculpting it's another chance for you guys to see the the future forms in action as well and ask any questions that you've got and what you'll notice is when we come to encapsulation i will work slightly differently from how i would if i was doing a standard clay set okay so for those of you that are just joining and maybe haven't watched the previous lives for a standard set of plexi gel from start to finish i definitely revisit the previous lives. so we've got one from around about two months ago you can find it in the sweet squared um on the sweet squared page in the section that is videos and you can revisit that okay so i definitely definitely recommend it because i am going to change up my application just a little bit today so then we're going to move on to these babies so these are the new future forms they are longer um, they are a lot more reinforced, they're almost like an aluminium type fabric and they've got a lot more markings on there as well. So in terms of ease for application, I find them a lot easier, I really do. So I'm just going to start off by just cutting straight down that centre point. You can tear it but I like to cut as I go. And then we're just going to give this a little bit of a wiggle 
And what I'm looking for when I'm wiggling is the line of light. See, I don't know if you guys can see the light on that form. And it's almost in a strip straight down the centre. Okay? We're looking for a line of light. So when I refer to that, we're looking at the light ref reflection. That's going to help us when we come to finish filing as well. We're then going to take the form, and I am doing a one-handed application because I've got no model. And I'm just going to place that underneath that nail where I've applied the bonder. So it's going to be a little bit faffy. I'm just going to zoom out ever so slightly if I can. I don't want to let me. That's all that moisturiser I put on beforehand. Okay, so we're going to place that under. And what I'm looking for is a sidewall fit. So if you guys can see that dark blue line, the second one along, okay, I'm actually going to cut the form. And what we're going to do is make sure that we've got a perfect fit, so we've got a completely perfect lower arch. So I'm just going to take a little bit away at a time, and this is going to ensure that we've got that absolutely perfect, perfect fit. So I'm going to take a cut in here, and I'm going to take a cut in here, okay? So for those of you that are maybe new to forms, this should help. And for those of you that are experienced, you still might pick something up along the way. I learn something new every day, and that's the way I like it. So we're going to give that another little wiggle. And try and get that line of light, so it's straight down the centre. I'm going to pull these areas out, and we're going to place that form under that nail. So what I'm looking for here when I turn to the side, is that the form itself is coming straight out from the nail, okay? But when I apply the product, I want to make sure that I've got really strong lower arch. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the lower arch, what we're looking for is the enhancement. I'm just going to use this like a ruler. Come straight out from that sidewall, okay? Until the tip of the finger. What you shouldn't have is an enhancement that comes down to here and then it scoots up, okay? If it scoots up, you've not got your strength and structure. The client's going to knock that nail and it's going to break straight across the stress area. So it is really important and it takes a little bit of time to get used to applying the product in this way. But I promise you, once you, once you crack it, you won't look back. So we're going to get that form on. And what I'm making sure is I've got a complete sidewall fit from side to side. I'm going to look from the side, check I've got a good fit there, which I haven't. So I'm just going to give it another little wiggle. And it's not easy applying a form on your own. Those of you that have tried, you'll understand where I'm coming from. So once I feel like I've got that under, which I have, I'm just going to push back here. And I'm just going to really quickly just push those into place. Because as I said, I've only got one hand free. We're going to secure the bottom two tabs. I'm just going to make my way up. Make sure that I'm happy with absolutely everything. I'm going to pop these across each other. And then we're going to secure on number three those bottom tabs. Okay, so what you'll notice if you've used forms before is this gives a really tight, snug fit. Almost like, and I don't know if you guys will have seen this before, but dowels. I love dowels. Um, they're really great for extreme enhancements. So this, for me, means I can get that really slim, tapered enhancement. You know, if you've ever applied a form and felt it looks wide, this is a great, great form to use for that. Okay, so we have applied our bonder. We've applied our form. And we're going to apply our builder. Because we're going for an enhancement, we're applying builder because we need that strength and structure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit differently. Because remember, I'm encapsulating. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a really thin layer over the natural nail. So I'm just going to drain on, off my brush. I'm just going to pop that to one side because I am incredibly clumsy. And we're just going to paint over the natural nail. And this is going to be quite thin because when we encapsulate and we're adding glitter and you, know, you might have some little stars in there, some little love hearts, those kind of things, that's great. But if the product itself is too thick, what you're going to do is file into your glitter. I don't know if you guys have done that, um, but when you file into your glitter, it changes colour. It's, it's really quite annoying. Um, and it just means that you've maybe not encapsulated fully with your clay, so you've sliced into the glitter with your file and that leaves you with a little bit of an unsightly mess. So we're going to aim for that not to happen today. So I'm then going to start to sculpt out. I've just got a small bead of product, the extension edge. And again, I'm not applying this really thick. And you'll notice that I didn't shake the bottle. 
If I do shake the bottle, we're going to incorporate air into our plexi gel. We don't want air in our plexi gel. So again, I'm just guiding and teasing that product from side to side, making sure I've got that nice, strong lower arch. And I want this to be thick enough because I'm actually going to file this before I move on to the next step. And I'll explain why when we come to it. So this is our builder gel that we're applying now. So we've done a thin layer over the natural nail and we're just starting to sculpt out that extension edge. So I'm not going to take this any longer than around about 12 millimetres because with plexi gel, you're really looking at working around about 12 millimetres is your maximum for your length. But you know, we wanted to do something, well, I wanted to do something a little bit different tonight. Okay, so when we're happy with that, I'm just going to get rid of that little tiny air bubble there because that'll drive me mad. We are then going to pop that into Cure. So I'm going to use a custom Cure technique. For those of you that haven't heard that, I would have a little look on the Sweet Squared blog on the actual website. And it's got a custom Cure technique, which is the technique that CD recommend. So for those of you that maybe experience an exothermic reaction, so commonly known as a heat spike, this is going to reduce that risk. You know, I've got quite thin nails. A couple of my nails, you might have noticed, are quite hooked. So for me, I always feel that little bit of heat if I don't take care. So using the custom cure technique, we're going to pop the hand in. We're going to flash cure on button one for two to three flashes. And the hand wants to be just in between the thumb indentations in there. OK, after those flashes, you can then move on to the next hand, okay, the next nail, sorry. Um, but you do want to do a full cure before you move on. OK, I am going to file this, so I am doing a full cure on 2B now. So we should be done with that soon. And then we can talk about what we're going to need for this look. So with the look that you guys chose, you actually chose one of the looks that had the least products. Um, the look number two, the one that was like an opal nail, that had a lot of products. Um, so this one's fairly easy. So we've just got three products that you're going to need. But like I said, use this as a guide. Use it for technique rather than colour. You know, what I've done might not be to your taste. You might think, I wouldn't have that. But you might have a client that would like it in a different shade. OK, so I am going to now have a little look, check that I feel like I've got enough product on there and I'm going to re remove my form. So we're going to go nice and gently. I'm going to give this a little squeeze. And we're going to give it a little wiggle and we're going to remove. OK, so there we go. And all I'm going to do is have a little look at my shape now. Now, remember I said to you guys that this product needs to be thin because if it's not thin, what we're going to have is we're going to encapsulate and we're going to file through. So you can see here the actual thickness of that tip. You can see obviously there's a little bit more on the natural nail, but you can see the thickness of the tip. And all I'm going to do is take my Kanga file and a very, very, very light touch. And I'm just going to take a little bit of product off of here and straighten this out. I'm not doing a great deal. And I'm just going to take a little bit off of here. And again, not a great deal. I'm going to shape around. And the reason that I'm doing this is if I don't do this and I have this excess bulk around the sides, when it comes to encapsulating, I'm going to have probably a little bit of silver down here where I've cut through the glitter, if that makes sense. So once you file through glitter, it changes colour. And I don't want to see that because we're going pink and white. Um, I don't want anything to ruin the design. So I've literally just tapered just around these edges. OK, now what I'm going to have to do, which I'd rather not, but I am going to have to do it, is remove the inhibition layer because I've got dust stuck in that now. So I'm just going to take a little bit of disperse just on a little lymph-free wipe and I'm going to wipe over. But because we've removed the inhibition layer, what that means is it's a smooth surface. So how is it going to stick? I'm just going to take my boomerang padded file and with a really, really light touch, I'm just going to rough up this surface. Now, if you feel like you've applied your form and you've um, perfectly, perfectly sculpted out that edge, and you don't need to do this. Um, you know, don't bother refining that free edge. Leave it as it was and just go straight in with your encapsulation design. However, I wasn't quite happy with it, so I have taken off some of the shine. OK, so I'm just going to give that another wipe just with disperse. And this is where we come to the fun bit, guys. So this is a bit that I find exciting now. You can use a palette or 
you can use the back of a stamp, um, stamp, stamper, stamping plate. My brain went then. So the colours that we're going to use to create this look are going to be these. Okay, so we have got in the centre, we've got Lady Lily, but this can very, very easily be swapped out for Cream Puff. Okay, and the two shades of glitter that I'm using are Golden White Multi Glitz and Darling Multi Glitz. Again, you don't need to use these colours. It can be any glitter. You can go for green, you could go for purple, you can go for pink. It's up to you and your imagination what you create, okay? I went for these because I think, you know, something a little bit girly. We're coming into spring and I just wanted to do something a little bit different. You can just use one glitter, but I like the fact that the gold and white multi-glitz is an iridescent, so it changes colour. So it has almost like a, a play on light. And I really like that because you've got all those different multicoloured tones in that nail, okay? So we're going to go for both. So this is where it gets good. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our little stamp plate. I have cleaned over that with some Scrub Fresh, but I have just touched it again. So I'm just going to give it another wipe just where I'm going to work. And we are going to decant some of our builder. OK, so we're going to decant a little bit of product. Now, you're only going to need enough of this depending on how many fingers you're working on. And make sure that you charge accordingly. Okay, so I'm just going to roll this off so I don't get any air in it. I'm going to roll again on top. And see how I'm just coming off in almost like a curling motion. I don't want to agitate it too much and get loads of air bubbles in there. So when we're encapsulating with glitter, with any liquid and powder service, whether it's liquid or pa liquid and powder, whether or not it's breezer, we want to work in a ratio. OK, what this means is we're not going to disturb the chemical makeup of this product. And that's really important because if we disturb the chemical makeup, your client's going to come back with chips and breaks. OK, they're going to knock that nail. It's going to break clean off. And it's because there's too much glitter and there's not enough support from the builder. OK, so the ratio that we want to work with is three parts plexi gel to one part glitter. OK, it's really hard to measure it out, but I can do this quite easily, quite visually. So I'm looking at that thinking, right, OK, we're just going to go for a small amount of the white. We're going to add that in and we're going to go for a small amount of the pink. We're going to add that in. OK, I'm just using an extremely old breezy brush. I must have had this eight years, maybe um, way, way back. But it's still one of my favourite brushes. Um, obviously, any gel brush you can use for this, but I just find for me, it's quite easy to maneuver the product around. So I'm just going to start to mix that in. And again, I'm working quite slowly and I'm not kind of whipping this product up. OK, so we're going to scoop this up onto our brush. I'm going to pop that off to one side and now we're going to float this on. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm just going to start to manoeuvre it where I want it. And yes, it's glitter mixed into plexi. So we want to be working in a ratio. We can't just mix a product in and expect it to work if we mix too much. So we want to be working in a ratio of three parts plexi gel to one part glitter or additive. OK, so that's really, really important. We're not chemists. We can't just think, right, OK, I'm going to mix this in and it's going to work. That's what C&D have said that we can work to a ratio of three parts glitter to one part additive. When we come on to application of the colour and the marbling, I'm going to show you guys something different as well. So it's going to get better. And these are all things I thought, you know what, Plex is good, but this just means that I can be so much more creative. So you'll notice now that I'm actually just kind of getting it on to give glitter rather than sculpting. OK, and the reason being, I'm not bothered for building up my structure with this. I'm really not. Um, it doesn't matter. There's a structure at this point because we're using plexi gel. We can go straight in on top and we can apply more plexi gel, which is great. So don't worry about your structure at this point. We are literally just getting the product to where we want it to be. So I'm just manipulating it so that I think, right, OK, I've got enough of the pink there. I've got enough of the white there. I'm happy with it. OK, so at this point, don't worry about structure. The main thing is that you're working thin because you need to cover all of this in clear. OK, if you don't cover it in clear, then you're going to cut through your glitter. It's going to change colour. OK, so we're just going to 
tweak that, move it around a little bit. I do want just a little bit more product, so I'm just going to come to the other side where there's no glitter. Because the last thing I want to do is contaminate my Plexi Gel with glitter because I'd be very upset about that. Very, very upset. So we're going to take a little bit more Plexi Gel and I'm going to twist that off. And we're just going to take a really small pinch of glitter now because remember we want to work three parts glitter at uh, three parts plexi to one part glitter so i'm just taking a really small amount there and a tiny tiny little bit of white and that's all we're going to need because remember we are not building a structure if you're working in vast amounts of product so for example if you're doing a full set you can get little spatulas. I believe Sweet Square are going to be having those. They're not C&D, um, but you can get little sp spatulas which have got a little spoon on the end, so you could very easily measure out your product. Obviously, I'm doing one nail, so it is a little bit of guesswork, but I've been doing nails a long time, so I, I can tell whether or not it's three parts plexi to one part glitter. Okay, so we've got another little bit of product on there, and all we're going to do is just touch lightly, and we're just going to move it around. Okay, so this is the bit that I would perfect because this is the bit where the client's going to go, hmm, there's a bald spot there. And we don't want bald spots. Bald spots aren't great. So I'm just going to spin around and we're just going to tuck it in. And like I said, structurally, don't worry about structure at this point, guys. Structure is what we're going to come to next. So all we're doing is creating a very thin veil of colour over the nail. Okay, so we're going to get that in the lamp and remember it's still plexi gel. So we need to think about that custom cure with working with Builder. I'm going to pop that in on button number 2B. So we're going to get rid of all of this now. We're done with the glitter. We don't need to think about that again. And I'm just going to dust off my desk whilst I'm curing. And we're going to move on to the good stuff. So we're going to need our Builder again. And what we're now going to do is start to build up our structure. OK, so the structure is what's going to give that that nail that lasting enhancement. If we don't focus on structure now, the client's going to come back, you know, maybe a week after she's broken one. Uh, it's not going to last. So for me, my structure comes after. So we call it almost like a sandwich. We're sandwiching the glitter in the middle. OK, so this does take a little bit of practice. It might not be something that comes to you incredibly easily. Um, you might do it a couple of times and think, Phew. No, I'm not, I'm not up for that. But honestly, I promise you, if you persevere and you work thin enough with your base layers, it becomes really easy. I really love encapsulating. Um, I really enjoy it. I feel like it just gives me a different dimension. It creates so much depth in the enhancement. Um, and you know, clients are like, whoa. And you know what it's like when you get a new colour and your clients are blown away by it. It's the same thing with this because they're watching you create something from nothing. So we're going to take some more product. We're just taking that from the neck of the bottle and you'll see I'm taking a little bit more this time. Okay. And we're going to literally start to build onto the enhancement. I'm just going to paint a little bit on first of all, just to smooth out any lumps and bumps from the glitter. The great thing is because we, we've encapsulated it within the glitter, it won't contaminate your brush. So if you have a little look at my brush now, although I've gone over the top, I have got absolutely no glitter particles in there at all. And that's a real thing that irritates me is when I get a contaminated top coat that was never meant to be contaminated. Um, so for me, it drives me, drives me mad. So we're just going to start to float this on and we're going to start to think about our structure. I'm just going to change angles and we're just floating that down, thinking, right, OK, I need a centralised apex round about the stress area. I need the most product down the centralised spine of the enhancement. So we're going to work that down. And honestly, if it looks like a mountain range at first, don't worry about it. It's not, not a big problem. Ideally, it's great if we can sculpt with a brush, but what you guys will probably feel is actually when you work with glitter in a gel, it's a lot more difficult to work with. It almost acts like a quite a thick viscosity builder so it does take a little bit more work it does take a little bit more leveling out and it won't do all of the leveling for you so you've got to do some of it yourself i'm afraid but it will be worth it so i'm just starting to bring down my apex so if I'm slightly out of shot and that extension edge is ever so slightly tilted down so i'm trying to think right okay where's my lower arch going to be 
So my lower arch is going to be slightly further down. So what I need to do is build up. Oh, we've slipped because I've hung to the side for too long. I need to build up that other side. If that ever happens in your client, you know, she just tilts her hand to the side for a couple of minutes and it slips, just touch it and tease it back to where you want it. It happens. It happens all the time. If it does go into the side walls, just use a clean brush just to clean up any product on the skin. We don't want any product on the skin at all. Okay, so again, I'm just guiding, just using my line of light. I'm not going to turn it to the side again because you guys saw what happened then. A little bit too much down this side, so I'm just going to tail that over. And I think I'm going to get that in the lamp and lock it in. If it needs more gel, I can put more gel on. But I think let's lock it in and we'll take it from there. Okay, so how are you guys feeling about that? Is it something that you you really want to try? Is it something that terrifies the life out of you? Or do you think, do you know what? It's, you know, it's something something different. Something different that I fancy doing. Because if you guys have already invested in Plexi and you are already using loose glitters with your shellac, then why not give it a try? You know, it's just something different. And I think, you know, most of our clients are going to come back, but you might have the odd few who take a little bit of enticing. And if you're posting pictures on social media and you're like, you know, I've, I've tried this and we're doing this and we're offering this now, you know, it's great for you to entice those clients back. So I think, you know, have a go. And what I'd really love to see as well, guys, is if you do have a little play around, tag me in your pictures. I'd love to see what you create as well, because there's so many different things that you could do. You could ombre the white and the pink together. You know, you could maybe just do a, a faded ombre. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, a full coverage. It could just be whatever your mind thinks of and what you want to create. I mean, I've got a full um, wall of Lucente glitters behind me, a full wall. And every time I look at it, I think, mm, and I could try that and you could try this and we could try something else. So, you know, it's all about what you feel is, is, is nice, what looks good. So we do need a little bit more structure. We're a little bit flat and it's not a lot, just a fraction. I need to file off a little bit of this lower arch it's just and you can see it just tailoring down ever so slightly but just here I feel like I've got a bald spot I don't know if you guys can see that so I think let's let's just fill that in because otherwise it's going to bother me for the rest of the live so we're just going to take a little bit more gel and I am literally just going to come down the centralized spine and I'm almost tailoring the product just to that area just where it needs to be so really slowly moving this around. So remember guys, if you want to have a go at this, your mix ratio is three parts plexi gel to one part glitter. And you can do this with Shaper as well. That little finger on my nail, that's with Shaper. You know, the only thing that I would say is it's slightly more viscous, it's runnier. So the only thing that you might experience is you're gonna have to work a bit quicker than I am. Okay? So I'm gonna pop that in and then we're gonna we're gonna need to do quite a bit of filing because that's a little bit lumpy, but you know what? It happens. So let's talk about files. So we are gonna then finish file, okay? We're gonna finish file. We want to refine our structure and then we're gonna go on to the marble technique, okay? So the marble technique is something a little bit different. It's not just shellac, okay? There's plexi within that. So again, it's something Something really exciting. I just think it gives us a little bit more opportunity um, to have a little bit of a play around and get creative and think, right, OK, I'm looking forward to trying that. And you could I could maybe do this technique with this look. For me, using Plexi Gel with this look means that I get quite a dispersed effect quite easily. And you'll you'll see exactly what I mean when we've done this enhancement. I'm just going to have a little time check, guys, and see how we're doing. 40 minutes in already and we've not even finished filed. I'm getting carried away chatting. Okay, so I'm going to give this a cleanse. And then we're going to start to finish file. So I'm going to try and speed through this a little bit. I know you guys saw me finish file um, last week and the live before. So I'm just straightening out that lower arch. That's the first thing I want to do. It's the first thing that I like to do with an enhancement. I like to see a nice straight lower arch. I'll probably come back to it and the same on this side so you'll see here I'm just going to try and tilt so you guys can see a little bit better in the camera I'm not filing into this I'm filing just here okay I'm not tucking my file under because if I do I'm going to take out the lower arch 
I'm then going to start to slim this down because it is, wait, it's a bit chubby. So I'm going to come up these sides. I'm just slimming out the hips of the enhancement. So whenever we're going for an almond or even a tapered nail, one of the things that we want to do is slim out the hips of the enhancement, okay? If we don't slim out those hips, what we're going to end up with is tr quite a chunky looking nail. I'm just going to see if I can zoom out a little bit. There we go. I'm just having to cleanse my screen with Disperse because I've got too much hand cream on. <laughs> Bear with me. There we go, that's better, is it? That'll have to do. Okay, so let's work our way around. And you'll notice here as I'm filing, I've got my file tilted ever so slightly back. So you can just see it starts to create an almond shape without me even really trying. Again, working around those sides. We're looking at the shape front on, but we still need to get rid of some of this width. I'll feel better about it when I've got rid of the width. I just don't like a chubby nail. I think when you've got quite um, wide fingers, I think when you have a really slim looking enhancement, it really elongates a finger. So for me, whenever I've got, you know, a square nail or a, a short nail, it doesn't quite give me that nice slender fingered look. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh dear. Okay, so I'm just working up the sides now. I'm sorry if this guy makes you feel a little bit sick, guys. And Elaine, it was the two glitters were Darling and Golden White Multi Glit. So they're chunky glitters. And they can be used on shellac. They can be used on your encapsulation with your enhancements. You know, they're, they're really versatile. They are a little bit chunky, so I love them encapsulated. So I'm just beveling that down. So we're starting to get there now. And we're going to come around the top, just around that cuticle line. For those of you that want to go into a little bit more information about finish filing, what I'd recommend is to revisit the very, very first um, live that I did. I think it was about two months ago. And we kind of talk through finish filing, talk through the areas. I know there's a lot of you watching tonight that have already watched the two lives that I've done. So I don't want to keep going over the same information for you guys. I wanted tonight to be a little bit more creative, a bit more of a transformation. So I'm just going to switch files to my Kanga and that means that I can get right down into the sidewall. So most of you are going to know this as a natural nail file and yeah, absolutely it is. But it's super skinny and it's super thin and I love it because I can get right down into the sidewalls and make sure that I've got really nice, neat finish. So that if you were to put shellac on, what you're not going to experience is it flooding into the cuticle line. I'm just straightening everything up and come to this side. I'm going to straighten that up a little bit more. Just bear with me, guys. My phone's just said I've got low battery and I was convinced that I plugged you in, but apparently I hadn't. But we have now, we're okay. Okay, so we're going to move around. We're just going to have a little look down the barrel. So we've still got quite a lot of bulk down this side here. And you'll notice that I'm not filing the skin here. I'm actually rolling over, which means I kind of catch this wide part. Just having a little look from the side view. A bit carried away with the build tonight, didn't I, guys? And we're just going around the perimeter. So you'll notice I tend to go back to some of the areas that I've worked on. Um, that's probably the perfectionist in me. I drive myself insane with it. But I just really like to make sure that I'm completely happy with the perimeter as I'm working. Have a little look down the barrel of the nail. I'm 
and we're nearly done. Okay, we're getting there. So if you are e-file trained, then you absolutely can use an e-file on this. If I was doing this on myself or a client, I'd be using an e-file. Uh, it just makes it really easy. The only downside of encapsulation that I should probably mention to you guys is if you encapsulate, remember that if the client wants a change in colour, then you are going to need to remove that down to that thin layer that we applied first. So that's why we apply that thin layer over the natural layer. So we're going to have to file it back. By all means, if your client comes in, do a rebalance as normal, and you can go straight over this with shellac, by all means. Um, you know, if they don't mind seeing the sparkly back, which most of them won't, you know, most of them won't like, won't mind seeing that. Okay, so we're nearly done. And I've got a couple of tiny little bubbles in there, but I'm not worried about it. And then we're going to move on to the more exciting bits. So I'm just going to give that a little dust off. Okay, so you can see here, can you see where it's changed to silver? That tiny, tiny, tiny little spot. Can anybody see that? Probably shouldn't be picking out my faults, but I think it's good for you to see. So that tiny little spot there is where I've ever, ever, I'm just going to come a bit closer, ever so slightly filed into the glitter. So it's just an absolute pinch, however... That little pinch will probably be amplified when we apply the top coat. And I don't like that. So, <laughs> so that'll, that'll bother me if that was staying on my nail. But also the thing is we're going to put a little bit of colour over this. So it's going to look different soon. So what do you think, guys? How does that look? I need to straighten out that lower arch a little bit more. Okay, we've, we're happy with this. Do we feel like that's fairly easy to do? Ready to have a go? I'm just going to taper that down a little bit more. I told you I'm a perfectionist. I'm terrible. So I'm just going to give it a light buff over. Just a light buff over with a boomerang. So this is just to remove any deep stretches. I just want to perfect in there as well. Anywhere that dust gathers, really good tip for you guys. Anywhere that dust gathers, it means there's a lip, there's an edge, okay? So if you think, hmm, got a bit of dust in there, then definitely, definitely, definitely do a bit more filing. Blend it in, because if there's dust in there, clients are going to pick it. That's the way that I always like to think about it. So I'm just going to go back to my boomerang. Smooth over. And I have no fingers left after I've done all these lives. <laughs> <laughs> okay have a little look down the barrel are we happy yeah okay so let's give that a little wipe so i'm going to dust off and i'm just going to change this little sheet okay and we're gonna give it a little wipe so we've got down the barrel there for you deborah Okay, so we've got a really nice thin tapered edge and then we move down the barrel. So we're going to give that a wipe and this gives us almost like a little taste of how it's going to look with top coat on. So if you wanted to leave this and just top coat, then you absolutely can just top coat. You know, it's completely up to you. But I wanted to do something a little bit extra. So we are going to do a little bit of mixing with Plexi Gel. Now, I bet you guys didn't know you could do this, could you? Hmm. So something different. Now, let me just cleanse over this stamping plate again. Now I saw a video on the c d page a couple of weeks ago um, and it was to do with mixing Plexigel in um, to, your shape, to your shape or your builder and I was like, oh, can we do that? Is that okay? So I have spoken to the global team and they said it is absolutely okay to do that providing, and this is really important guys. So this is about us not being chemists. OK, we are not chemists. We cannot say what's chemically compatible, what's going to work and what isn't. So if you do choose to mix in some shellac, you need to be very strict about the ratio. OK, very, very strict. It is five to ten percent shellac to shaper. OK, so that's 
5% to 95% shaper or builder or 10% shellac to 90% shaper or builder. Okay, so that is going to be really hard for you to determine. And all we're doing here is we're creating a wash. So that's another important thing. We're not mixing this up to have a bright white finish. Okay, so I want to be really, really clear about that. I know I'm really firm, but I'm going back to the fact that we don't want clients having uncured product. We don't want any chemical reactions. So five to 10% of your shellac can be mixed in to shaper to create, and this is the key word, a tint. Okay, just a tint. Now you can create what I'm after with white wedding, but not everybody's got white wedding. So I wanted to show you something different, okay? So I'm gonna take Shaper because I've finished my enhancement, I'm fairly happy with it, but I want to create a wash of color. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Shaper onto my palette, and again, I'm rolling off, and I'm rolling off because we don't want to incorporate air bubbles in, okay? And we're gonna take, and when I say pinch, so let's look at the size of that, and we're gonna compare it to adding in a tiny little pinch of our shellac. So if we imagine that was broken into 10 pieces, okay, that's only the amount that we can add in of our shellac. So it really is the tiny, 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 tiniest pinch of colour, okay? In fact, I'm probably going to use half of that because I even feel like that's too much. Let me wipe off my brush because I don't want any glitter in there. I'm going to get rid of some of that. Okay. And we are going to mix this in for a slight tint of colour, guys. So for those of you that saw the nails that I posted um, on my Instagram quite a while ago, they were like a black glass effect nail with plexi gel. You can create this with plexi gel. So it just gives us something else. If your client wanted um, to have quite a natural looking enhancement, remember you can add in five to ten percent but it's literally for a wash of color okay it's not to sculpt your enhancement out with it's just a wash so the reason i'm using this is it disperses shellac really well and by that i mean it's going to make our, our marble really easy so we're going to take our little wash that we've created just on my little gel, gel brush and i'm simply gonna apply that over because i wanted it to look a little bit cloudy if you don't want it to look cloudy you don't need to do this okay but i like the effect that it gives I think it looks a little bit different. It's just, it's just something else, isn't it? And no, Debbie, you shouldn't incorporate any bubbles because I'm using Shaper. If you're working with Builder, you're gonna have to work a little bit lighter and a little bit slower. But that's why I'm using Shaper, guys, because I feel it's easier to create this wash using your Shaper because it's gonna self-level out for me. Okay, and then what I can also do because I've only gone for 5%, is I can actually drop in a little bit of my shellac. So you need to be a little bit good at maths, guys. Um, but again, it's just something different for you to try. But remember, it's so important that we, we don't play around with the chemicals. We make sure that we're using it properly. You know, CMD have said that this is okay. So please don't think that you can create some kind of vast bright pink nail because it's it's just for a simple wash and for nail art okay so I'm going to come down the nail now with my s1 brush okay I've just got on my little palette a little bit of my lady lily and I'm going to stripe this directly into the nail so this is uncured and the reason I want it uncured because it disperses perfectly And I'm not trying for something that looks perfect. I'm really not. I think the more kind of random these kind of nails are, actually, the better. I'm just going to do a little fork on that side. And then I'm going to take that same gel brush and I'm going to blur the lines out. So I'm just touching, tapping, touching, tapping, touching, tapping all the way along. And I'm only doing it on the outside perimeter of this. Okay move to the other side can you see how that's almost spreading like it's on a blooming gel so it's creating that really kind of soft diffused look which is really hard to create with shellac on its own I think you know we can mix disperse and we can do it that way but it just gives us that little bit more of a creative element 
from Kate. So I'm going to pop that into the lamp and I'm going to lock that into place. So remember, guys, it's shaper, so it's on 2B, okay? So when that's cured, I am going to finish off my design and add a little bit more depth because this time I want the shellac to be a little bit punchier, a little bit brighter, okay? So I'm going to take just a tiny little pinch more. And one thing that I'd also mention, guys, if you're ever dispensing your shellac onto a palette, what I want you to be mindful of is that solvents evaporate, okay? And what that means is the longer that your shellac is left on a palette, the thicker it's going to feel. Because as the solvents evaporate, it becomes less workable. If you're wanting to stamp with shellac, then that's a brilliant thing to do. We'll leave it in the palette for a couple of minutes. However, if you're doing hand-painted art, if you leave it for too long, you're going to find it's less workable. So I'm just working here through while that's curing. And all I'm going to do is detail. When I originally did this design, I put a little bit of foil on there as well. And I just felt like it was a bit too much. Um, personal preference and all that. So you can absolutely add foil if you want to, but you don't have to. So all I'm going to do now is just detail. Just a little bit up in here. And a little bit up there. And a little bit down here. Tiny little bit in here. And remember guys, you don't have to do this design. You could stamp on top of this. If you wanted to stamp on it, all you would need to do is apply, say for example, after your, your finished filed, you could put a layer of something like clearly pink on. So clearly pink, if you've never used it, is almost like a completely translucent um, pink, so to speak, I suppose. It's just like a barely there. So you could absolutely use that for your wash of colour. So we're going to finish off with either. And this is the option now. We could finish it with matte. We could finish it with shellac top coat. Or we could finish it with Plexi Gel Protect top coat. Okay. And we can use Protect to top coat because we've got Plexi Gel underneath it. So it's almost like our Plexi Gel sandwich. Okay. So what do you guys fancy? Do you fancy matte for something different? Or do you really want to see the glitter pop and maybe go for Plexi Gel Protect top coat? Any votes before I apply? Let me know, guys. Let me know your thoughts. So you've already seen it glossy. We can do that again if that's what you want to see. Completely up to you. Okay, so that's cured. So we've got no votes. So, uh, oh, no, we've got matte. Any more? Let's see, so we've got two votes so far. So we're going to go for matte top coat or gloss top coat. What do you fancy, guys? Matte top coat or plexi? So we've got three votes for plexi, one vote for matte. Any more votes before I get that on? Plexi, okay. So we're going for a shiny top coat. But you can, like I said, guys, you can customise this however you want. You know, matte finish is cool. I love matte finish. Um, but it's, it's just personal preference. So let's get this top coat on. And you can really see that glitter in there. Remember, this is your protection. So we want to make sure we've got enough top coat on there to protect. And I'm sealing that free edge as well. I'm just going to quickly just fly over that. A little bit different. Let's pop that in. So if you think about it, you could do that in like a deep purple. You could finish it off with some stamping instead of the hand paint in art. You know, you could do so many things with that. You could do it as an ombre. So you've kind of got the foundation there. And that's what I wanted to do was give you the foundation of the application. So you can think, right, OK, I can go away and I can try this. I can try that. But remember, you need to charge accordingly. So I always tend to charge on price. So if it takes you 20% longer than it would for a normal set of Plexi Gel, then make sure you add the time on and the cost per service, okay? In terms of service, it doesn't cost you much. I can't remember how much Lacente is per service, but it's not a lot. I think it's something like 20 pence. Um, you're not using any more Plexi Gel than you would have done. So that's great. Um, but I think, yeah, have a little go. Definitely tag me. If you've got me on Instagram, it's victoria.trafford on Instagram, or you can tag me on Facebook, on my educator page, or even upload them onto the Sweet Sweared page. I'd love to see what you guys create. So let's get that cleansed, and let's get a little bit of oil on it, and we're going to give it a little buff up. 
I always love to finish um, any nail or enhancements with a little drop of solar oil but I like to buff it in so it really really does give a much glossier finish so I'm just rubbing the oil in and then I'm just buffing it off with a completely completely dry wipe Okay, what do you think? Easy or intermediate? <laughs> Have a little play around though, honestly. It makes it much, much easier. Once you start playing with it, you'll realise what you need to work a little bit thicker with, what you need to work a little bit thinner with. Now, I just want to really quickly, I know I'm slightly over time, just quickly tell you what I used for the other nails. Okay, same technique for that little finger. Okay, floated the product on. I, I thinned it out towards the cuticle line. And what I used was Sapphire Holographic and Ocean Iridescent, okay? So same technique, but remember this one was Shaper as well. So you can apply it with Shaper. Remember if you're working with Shaper, nice and thin guys, okay? So something just a little bit different for those clients that maybe just want an overlay. And then I'll really quickly again, because I don't want to keep you, I just appreciate you've given me your time this evening. Then we've got all of these, okay? So for this nail, Okay, we encapsulated with both Mermaid and Flamingo Mixed, okay? There were probably only about seven or eight flecks on that nail, but it just gives it a little bit of depth. You can see it through the back, it's just a little bit different. Then I finished that nail, okay? I finished it, completely finished filed it. And then I applied some Clearly Oil Slick and capped that in with matte top coat. So you can see that's a matte finish. Okay, around the edges, after I'd cleanse off the inhibition layer, and that's key, cleanse off your inhibition layer after you've cured your matte top coat, okay? I then traced around the perimeter with Get That Gold, okay? Once I'd traced around the perimeter and cured that, I pressed in some bright gold foil, Okay? And after I pressed in the bright gold foil, I told you there were a lot of steps to this one. I traced around the gold with uh, original top coat, okay? Cured it, removed the inhibition layer, and it left us with almost like a little opal style nail. Again, it's not to everybody's taste, but it's all underlying basics that I've given you, hopefully, so that you can go away, have a little bit of a play around, see what works for you, see what your clients like as well. Now, during this time, um, we've got a, a, a lady that called Sarah, Sarah and she mentioned to me the other day about getting in touch with your clients and saying to them, you know, if you were coming in for your nails this week, what would you have done? And almost like a little challenge, which I think is really, really nice. Um, you know, asking your clients what they'd have done, tell them about anything new that you've been learning, keep engaged with your clients. I think that's really, really important. You know, you want to try and entice them back when we can. So I really hope that tonight has been beneficial for you guys. I hope it's given you something a little bit different to think about as well, rather than just plexi gel. You know, you guys are probably sick of the sight of me now. Um, and shellac as well. It's just something different. Have a little play around. Tag me in your creations. And I am going to be back again next Tuesday. Okay, so I'll be back next Tuesday, Tuesday after that, Tuesday after that. I think altogether you've got six weeks of me, guys. So, you know, if there's anything you'd like to see as well, drop me a message. I'd be really interested to know what you would like to see from me. Um, we have got things mapped out with the team, but I'd, I'd really like to hear from you personally and if it's helped you. Um, so, yeah, get in touch. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's been lovely to see you all, even if it's online. Um, but, yeah, I hope it's helped. Okay, see you soon. Bye.